Good morning, so my name's Joe Mercer and I'm going to be talking about distal esophageal stent migration, in particular reference to the Christie's experience of the Ella HV stent. We know from the registry of esophageal stenting that stents placed across the cardia are more likely to migrate distally than those with a landing zone in the distal esophagus, and this is a problem that frequently requires repeated intervention. Our experience comes from 10 years of using this stent in a, a specialist cancer centre. I should at this point point out these two disclosures. The department is involved in post-marketing surveillance of, of these devices. So just to talk briefly about the consequences of distal stent migration. This frequently means recurrent dysphagia for the patients and often a repeat stenting procedure with the associated morbidity of that and inherent risk. There's also a financial cost to bear in mind. We estimate that a single placement of an esophageal stent costs in the region of £1,300 for the procedure itself, rising to about 1700 if you include the often required overnight stay. So this is the stent in question. It's the familiar nickel-titanium alloy in a braided configuration forming a, a relatively rigid structure. There's an optional distal anti-reflux valve and at the proximal end, in addition to the loop for retrieval, there are loops of nitinol covered with silicon which form an anti-migration collar that will flare out as it abuts the proximal end of a stricture or the handle of the forceps, as we see in this image, forming a mechanical anchor, which can actually invert entirely if there is continued um, distal pressure on, on the stent. So one of these stents was placed into the distal esophagus of a 66-year-old male with locally advanced adenocarcinoma who previously had a standard stent inserted uh, three months previously but represented with recurrent dysphagia. One of the LS stents was inserted um, and remained in place 241 days later uh, when the patient passed away. So these are the images from that insertion. You can see the standard stents migrated into the distal esophagus, uh, sorry, into the stomach on the uh, left-hand image there with the malignant stricture um, in the distal esophagus clearly seen. And then in the right-hand image, you see the, um, at this stage, incomplete expansion of the L stent crossing the stricture with the distal end in the uh, uh, proximal gastric body. So we identified all the esophageal stent procedures uh, over 10 years fr from um, our centre and extracted those in which an LIHV stent was placed, excluding those that didn't cross the cardia or those that were placed with an additional stent as part of a more complex procedure. And follow-up was defined as the stent position on the latest chest x-ray or cross-sectional imaging um, if the patient was alive or if the patient had passed away at uh, the date of death interrogating the radiology and electronic patient record for any details of stent migration or subsequent removal. Any migrations, distal migrations, were recorded and compared by means of a chi-squared test with the data from ROST. So 89 cases were identified with a median follow-up of 75 days. Four stents were found to have migrated, two of which uh, were subsequently removed um, in the uh, in the department, and this was reportedly a relatively straightforward procedure, and both of these stents were intact. And we didn't experience any stent fractures while the stents were in situ in um, the whole of our, our cohort. So this corresponds to a distal migration rate of 5.2% uh, compared with the uh, ROS data migration rate of 17.7%. Uh, representing a statistically significant reduction in migration of approximately 70%. So if we extrapolate this um, using the, the cost that I mentioned before to a hypothetical department um, placing 20 of these stents across the GOJ in a year or, or any um, time period, we might expect of the 20 between 3 and 4 to, of the standard stents to migrate distally with an associated financial cost of about £5,800. Had the um, LS stent, based on our experience, been placed initially, that's, um, uh, that cost, by comparison, would be £2,300, giving a predicted hypothetical sa saving of about £3,500. So cl clearly, uh, due to 
variation in patient anatomy, stricture characteristics, and temporal changes due to disease progression or treatment, it's quite difficult to get concrete data on the performance of these, these devices. And our observational study is beset by the problems of all non-randomized um, studies in that we have unbinded um, operators um, with bias for patient selection and, um, and uh, device selection. But having said that, our experience was that there was a significant reduction in migration with an associated reduced reintervention rates. And from our experience, this is a robust sense. We experienced no in situ failures and perhaps might be considered the sense of choice across a straight GOJ. So thank you. Any questions?